All right, welcome to my video where I describe to you how I put together my Aurelic whole home audio system. The goal was to make it be this, uh, you know, super flat layout to hang on the wall uh, so it could fit behind this bookshelf uh, to hide everything. And ultimately the wires were already there for all the speakers around the house when I bought the house. I think there was a Sonos system here before, uh, but I wanted to use a Relic to do the whole setup because I love the way uh, those devices work and how you can kind of group the rooms. Uh, and so to put it all together, I had to do um, two of those 24 volt uh, power supplies to power the uh, up to stream amps. Uh, so I really have about three amps per power supply. 14.6 amps of 24 volt power gives me plenty of oomph and then those 48 volt power supplies uh, with 9.6 amps feed the uh, IEMA A07 amps that are fed off of the up to stream pros. I really needed more power for some of the outdoor speakers in this setup. Uh, that's why I used the pros with the external amps. But then for some of the other smaller rooms, it was perfectly fine to use a relics. So let me take you through the CAD. All right, let me show you how I put this together in Fusion 360. Again, it was really important to do that in here because of how flat this was. So, and I had to line everything up on the DIN rails to even make sure, you know, that first row up there kind of fit with the second row. Uh, and uh, right here, you've got the two of these uh, up to stream pros. And I didn't need the amplifier piece of the board for these. I did want the ethernet though, because I didn't want any of these running on Wi-Fi. Uh, I just didn't want the contention when I was doing multiple rooms. Um, so this guy feeds this amp. This amp is actually an IEMA uh, A07. I know it's upside down here. And of course the way I do these is I just kind of get the general uh, parameters for it by measuring with a caliper and then I just snap a photo and stick it on a canvas inside Fusion 360, which I find to be super amazingly convenient to use Fusion 360 for this stuff. Still had to model that knob though, because I had to get this bracket figured out for how to kind of, um, you know, let that amplifier hang uh, from the DIN rail. I actually did put two of these on it uh, in the final product. That amp runs off of this power supply, which is 48 volt, uh, around seven amps. Uh, which is plenty of power. These both are 24 volt ones. Really, this has got enough amperage to run three amps in parallel. These are the up to stream amps. Uh, and those sound really nice, but they are for like smaller rooms, uh, at least in my setup. And then I only had um, two uh, over here feeding into this one. So I definitely had some extra amperage left over, but it uh, was the best setup. I also needed a five volt power supply, which is what the mean well is right here. It's overkill because it's eight amps, but I had a whole bunch lying around, so I just used it. And I had the uh, CAD file for it. The uh, the little brackets for these, you know, this bracket is uh, the one connecting into this board. These two brackets go down to the board below. Uh, just getting those holes correct. This is why I was asking uh, a relic for the CAD files. It actually took me a few different prints to get the alignment. I think I was like a one and a half millimeter off initially and then had to nudge it and then I was still a little bit off. Uh, same thing with these, just kind of getting these totally correct um, was a little bit uh, of a pain, although I got it going and then you got the, the ethernet controller in there. So really happy with how flat this came out. Uh, let me show you how it actually came together in the real world. I'm printing the clips out from Fusion 360. I exported them to the 3MF files and brought them into Cura and then sent them up to my Boron Trident printer. And they're made out of ABS. I'm actually using eSun's ABS Plus. Uh, I really love working with ABS now. I worked with PLA for years um, just doing the Ender 3, but I upgraded to the Voron printer. Now I'm able to do ABS no problem because I've got an enclosure and it's just an incredible plastic to work with. It doesn't droop over time like PLA would. Those clips would never actually work in PLA because they wouldn't keep the tension uh, on the rail. So I'm finding that you can make very functional parts with ABS. Um, you just got to get uh, more of an expensive printer, but now you're starting to really be able to make usable things. You can see how the plastic is actually bent there when it's on the rail, so it actually creates a lot of tension against it. 
and uh, you can slide the the rails on but you can also clip them on um, from the outside so you can still kind of change this thing once you've got lots of uh, din rail plastic pieces hanging off of it um, so you can see here I'm just trying to kind of line up the holes uh, those are M3 by 8 millimeter socket head cap screws that I'm using uh, so make sure you pick up uh, a bag of those if you're going to do this I did end up using a rail on the left and right side of that just to kind of keep it stable, even though it probably would have been okay with one rail. Uh, I labeled them nicely just because I'm a little OCD and I like to have things looking pretty clean at the end, especially if I come back a year later and I have no idea. I don't remember anything about how I actually designed it. So you can see this uh, board hanging off of that rail really nicely. Uh, and then here's a power supply. This one's the 48 volt, 7.3 amp. Uh, these go into those IEMA A07 amplifiers, which have that Texas Instruments TPA3225 chip in it, which is pretty famous. Um, and I love the sound of those. So here's the clip that goes on the back of the power supply. And I just, I had to use those flat head cap screws on it to get that flush against the wall. Uh, I think those were M3s, but they could be M4s. I don't totally remember. Uh, and then you can't make those have too much length to them because you can start to run into components inside the power supply itself. Um, getting the measurement on those wasn't as bad. I just kind of left some wiggle room. Uh, and then here's all four power supplies. Uh, it's pretty heavy, by the way. Uh, well, it looks like I only have three hanging on there at that point. And then that D-Link Ethernet switch in the middle. Um, which uh, I remember taking a little bit of measurement, uh, being that, that being a little bit off too when I created the rails for it. Uh, here's the smallest rails I had to do, which was for those uh, up to stream pros. And I didn't really do a rail on both sides of those because I just didn't think it was necessary. They're so small and so light. Uh, but I got that finally lined up after a few tries. And same socket head cap screws on this one. Uh, and the threading, by the way, you just go right into the plastic. You don't need to thread that stuff. I, I think I made those holes like 2.8 millimeters so that you really almost have like 0.2 millimeter worth of uh, plastic you're screwing the M3 screw into. Uh, and it just kind of, those pros just kind of sneak right into that open spot there. I started to have a little bit of Ethernet wire, you know, getting close to them. It was starting to get a little crowded in there, but it worked out in the end. And here I'm just snapping on this clip. Uh, you can see how, how nice that is. You know, initially I thought I might have to slide everything on, um, but you just got to push on it hard enough. Now here it is hanging on the wall, looking really pretty. Two clips per power supply. Those are pretty thick. Um, they needed to be thicker because the second rail is actually hanging off of the power supplies uh, on the bottom there. You can see there's a bottom div rail clip. Uh, and then here's how that D-Link fits in there. I haven't done any of the wiring yet at this point. I want to hang these um, A07 amps as well. Um, that was a little bit of a different clip design. And in fact, this ended up being the thickest part of the design where these clips right here, that's actually what the bookcase bumps up against. I needed room to get to the on-off switch for each amplifier and I needed room to get to that volume control because, because I, I got to kind of dial in the, um, the volume for the outdoor patio speakers and the sunroom speakers off that one. Uh, and I wasn't sure if this was even going to hold it tight enough because it is just kind of the, the ABS plastic creating tension on the top of that uh, amplifier. But it worked out great in the end. You can see I got two clips on each one of those. I got the five uh, amp, Arillic amp devices, the two Pro devices, the D-Link. I got the power strip hanging on the wall there. I got the five volt um, converter hanging on the wall. So everything came together really nicely, all the wiring. I used 16 gauge wires from the power supplies over to the up to stream boards and from the 120 volts into the power supplies. So all of the wiring thickness is correct. Um, I had to buy one foot ethernet cables and some one and a half foot ethernet cables just to not have too many extra ethernet cables running around. 
Um, and I tried to get all the wiring colors correct too. Uh, I tucked in a lot of those Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas kind of behind some of the plastic DIN rails just to get them out of the way because I'm not really using them. Uh, all of the speaker wires were connected up and when I tested it out, everything started, everything sounded great. Everything still sounds great. It's about a month later. Things are working. I haven't had to worry about like rebooting anything. Uh, I do have this on all the time, so I don't like that. I'm actually considering adding um, GPIO switch. If you kind of detect any of these um, up to stream amps go on, you can turn on the bigger amps and the bigger power supplies. Um, but it's not bad. There's not much heat coming off of it, which means I'm not wasting that much power, although it's not like I'm measuring the power that it's taking while it's sitting idle. Uh, and so look how nice it looks on the wall. And I'm about to put the bookshelf back here to kind of show you how slim and clean it looks. And there we have it. Uh, it looks so nice and so clean, you would really have no idea how much complexity is hanging on the wall behind that bookshelf. Uh, and as I kind of come around the side here to show you the side angle uh, and how svelte the setup is, uh, there we have it. You really almost have no idea. Even the baseboard is almost the thickness of this setup so that the bookshelf was actually already sitting off the shelf already anyway. Okay, I'm in Spotify now on my laptop. And now that that whole home audio system is configured and turned on, I've got a whole bunch of new uh, destinations that I can send my Spotify music to. Uh, not all of those are Aurelic devices. Um, but let's give it a go. I'll play some music here. So that's on the computer. And then I'm going to send it to my office that I'm sitting in right now. And there it is. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to go into the for stream app and uh, go to devices and it shows all of those uh, devices in here as well just like Spotify does but in this app you can combine for the whole home audio so what I'll do is I'll make kind of the main device be my office and then I can add the other locations uh, I'll skip doing my daughters and then you get a little bit of a waiting and while well, it's combining all of the locations together. Okay, they're combined together, but it looks like it didn't do all of them. So I'm going to try that again. And the ones that it missed, maybe you can only do so many at one time. Okay, now they're all combined. Okay, and on the computer, now when I go look at the list, because I made John Office be the lead, the icon has now got two speakers. So I'll hit play here on the computer, and now I'll send it to the combined. Okay, so it's playing up there but it's also playing out in other speakers in the house. Okay, so we're heading out of my office and into the entry area. That's got two speakers in the ceiling. And then uh, right next door to that is the dining room that's got its own two speakers. Uh, so those are sounding great. Those are running off of the amp boards because they don't have to be that powerful. And then in the master bedroom, there are the speakers running. Again, that's off of uh, up to stream amp board because it doesn't have to be too, too loud. And then we've got next up, uh, oh, this, is, uh, this is the sunroom. So those actually are off of one of those IEMA A07 amps because this uh, gets kind of opened up to the outdoors uh, every now and then. And so those can be more powerful. Uh, when there's something going on in the backyard. 
And then next up are the patio speakers. Those are actually the loudest, so those are off of another one of those IEMA A07 amps, because um, those can kick out some good sound. And then last up is the game room with two more in-ceiling speakers off of an up-to-stream amp board. Thanks for watching.